We talk to her about cinema, acting, motherhood, and being married to French superstar Vincent Cassel. So I come from a very provincial life, some way, and uh, my parents were very generous, very attentive, and um, at the same time they gave me so much freedom. My parents often they took me to, to to cinema and to see movies and. Uh, with them, I had the chance to see all the um, uh, beautiful old Italian movies and I had the chance to discover all those incredible directors like Fellini, Rossellini, Visconti, De Sica, Antonioni and f of course all their leading ladies like, uh, you know, Claudia Cardinale, Sofia Loren, Ginalolo Brigida, uh, Anna Magnani and I have to say that if I do movies today, it's because I was really inspired by those incredible actresses. Cinema was my passion, but so far away from my reality. And, uh, and actually, I started out as a model because it was the easiest way to escape from my provincial life. I went to Milan, and then I went to Paris, then I went to New York. I was interested and fascinated uh, uh, by the world of photography and images and I had the chance to work with incredible photographers like uh, Helmut Newton, Stephen Maisel and uh, Bruce Weber and Fabrizio Ferri and Oliver Toscani. And through pictures I had the chance to get into movie business, which I really you know, wanted to, to do. I want to see what you see. I want to love what you love. They're taking me away from all this death. Monica's first big movie break came in 1992, when she caught the eye of American heavyweight director Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, it was funny because Francis Ford Coppola so my pictures in a magazine, he wanted to meet me, and I did this little tiny moment in Dracula. And it was a little moment, but I, I even if I was there for a few seconds, I, I get smitten. And, uh, and actually after that, I started acting lessons, and, um, and I worked, of course, even on languages, because like that, I had the chance to work in different countries because uh, Italian movies, they're not anymore today like used to be. And it's very difficult to become international through Italian movies. Monica's next big break was in BAFTA award-winning French film, Le Appartement. Playing the role of Lisa earned Monica her acting accolades and a César nomination in the most promising young actress category. It was also where she met her future husband, French actor Vincent Cassel. I did um, an audition for L'Appartement. It was a small, nice French movie. And actually, <laughs> during the audition, I met Vincent, my husband. But he was a bit pretentious, but very charming. And maybe I was a, a, attracted right away, but just I, I don't think that I really realized that at the time, you know, but now.
Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassell are without doubt one of the film world's most glamorous couples gracing the red carpet today. They also have two daughters and have starred side by side in four films to date. We've been together for 14 years now and we've done a few movies together. C'est ça le fameux Doberman Oui, c'est ça le fameux Doberman. But when I work with him, I don't think that is my husband, you know. I'm just an actor and I have to give my best. He has to give me his best. Monica and Vincent starred together in the controversial 2002 French film Irreversible by Gaspar Noé. The role was her most challenging to date due to the now infamous graphic and extended violent scenes. You know, I'm, I'm happy, for example, that I had the chance to do Irreversible with him because it was a, a difficult movie in some way, you know? And it was good that Vincent was there. We, we could support it, supporting each other. But, for example, when I think about Irreversible, even though, I mean, the film was very violent. He created such a polemic situation, uh, was disturbing. But I think more about the process of creation, because was a, it's were really, it, it was really a process of a creation between Gaspar Noé, the director, Vincent, and me. So I think more about the work that we did, because, uh, I mean, when we started the movie, we didn't have a script. I mean, with just improvisation, it was pure improvisation. And, and the film is done with sequence shots. So each take was about 20 minutes. So we had the freedom to work like in theater. When I did the rape scene, he wasn't there, and actually it was easier that way. You know, it's just a, a process of acting. But at the same time, what I like about our job is that, uh, of, of course, there is a part that is technical, but what I like is when I don't know what I'm going to do three, sec three, three seconds before the take, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's the most interesting part of our work. And it's true that the film is very violent. The first 20 minutes are really violent. And then the film becomes very poetic, very beautiful. And, and today is a, I mean, Irreversible is a reference. Is a, it becomes really a cult movie. When Irreversible premiered at Cannes in 2002, the audience was shocked at the violent subject matter, with some viewers protesting with their feet and walking out. Monica was also told that she would not work again after this movie. However, this was far from the case. Instead, it revealed Monica as a brave and risk-taking actress who was in control of her own acting career. Also, we didn't realize that could be so, could become so international. Uh, and because of course the film went to Cannes and through Cannes, you know, was a mix of scandal, curiosity, uh, people hated, people loved it. And today is there, and um, and I, I'm I'm very happy that I had the chance to do this movie. So when I think about Reverse Ball, you know, it was just a really beautiful present for me as an actor. In 2004, Monica starred in another controversial film, playing Mary Magdalene in Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. I actually had no idea that the film could be could become so controversial and so successful at the same time. And I remember that Mel Gibson was in Italy, he was preparing the movie, and I really wanted to meet him. And I wanted to play Mary Magdalene. So we met, I did the movie. And I think that Mel Gibson as director is a really, really talented director. And I really, I worked really well with him. And this film became, you know, something incredible. You know, maybe, I don't know why, I'm always in those kind of movies, very violent and controversial, maybe because I like the dark sides of humanity 
And maybe that's why I do movies, because uh, through my work, I have the chance to discover our dark side. Monica explores her dark side again, playing the romantic and sultry femme fatale character Manouche in Alain Corneau's Le Deuxième Souf. The concept of femme fatale, it means dangerous, um, dangerous and unpredictable. But even though a woman is dangerous and unpredictable, uh, it becomes irresistible. J'étais reçue, il fallait voir comment, au petit soin avec un brin de gringue par-dessus le marché. Il m'a dit que je pouvais me déplacer à ma guise, etc., etc. Liberté contre. Tu vois le genre. Il faut jouer avec ses cartes. On te rende depuis qu'on négocie. Ça n'arrive pas à te faire prendre les larges, c'est la fin du monde. En tout cas, je ne retourne pas là-bas. Et moi, qu'est-ce que je deviens dans tout ça Je sais bien ce qui s'est passé, j'ai joué, j'ai perdu. Maintenant, ils me cherchent. Ils me chercheront toujours. Je pense que le cinéma français a une femme fatale, si vous pensez à euh, Catherine de Neuve, euh, Brigitte Bardot, euh, Simon Signoret, Jean Moreau. Et Alain Corneau m'a donné la chance de jouer Manouche. Et elle est la parfaite femme noire héroïne, la femme au centre d'un univers dominé. Et elle vient de la rue et a réinventé comme une femme de business. And uh, it's a love story between two lucid adults, uh, each of whom comes from hard times and learned how to fight back. And um, uh, I want this character, for this character, I wanted to be blonde uh, because at that time, the, the, the idea, the ideal of female beauty was blonde and with curvy figure. But her black roots betray uh, the image she has constructed to save herself from the streets. And, uh, and I had so much fun to play this, you know, dark lady some way. Mais il faudrait une petite maison indépendante. C'est pour que chez Gustave Menda. Pour son passeport, je m'en occupe. Les amis lui demandent s'il veut toucher 100 millions avant de quitter le pays. Comment tu fais La chance. Il est riche maintenant. Il est seul. Il est arrivé. Il ne va pas supporter que les gens les croient capables de ça. Et je pense que le cinéma français a vraiment important pour construire une partie de ma carrière. J'étais déjà en amour avec les films français quand je suis venu en France. Et je savais déjà beaucoup sur you know, all the French movies. I was in love with the French actresses. And uh, so actually I was very lucky because I came to Paris and I had the chance to get in touch with the, with the French cinema and uh, I was accepted like if I was French. And today, even though when I speak French, I have a little tiny accent, but you know, I really, I, I work like if I'm French and this is, so incredible to come in a country that is not yours and you are loved, you are accepted. So, um, you know, French cinema in 2006 me. and Wong Kar Wai was the president at the time. And uh, I mean, it's so much work because you have to watch like three films a day, but at the same time it was a, such a strong experience. And I don't know if, if it's something that I'm going to do again because I don't like to give votes, you know? So it doesn't mean that I'm right or you're wrong, it's just that we have different tastes. So it's, I prefer to make movies and that's it. No, I don't like to, you know, to give, I don't like when my opinion becomes uh, so important. In 2009, Monica teamed up with French star Sophie Marceau in Marina Devan's Don't Look Back. 
Actually, I wanted to do this movie because I really respect Marina Devan, the director. She's a young and talented director. And it uh, was really interesting to work with Sophie Marceau. Uh, I really respect her as a woman, as an actress, and uh, really there was a beautiful chemistry between us. And I think that this chemistry really created the magic of the movie and it was beautiful to go to Cannes together and present the film over there. And so it was really, really beautiful experience, this movie. So, what you gonna Even today, even though my French is very good, when I, when I make a French movie, I prefer to work with a uh, dialogue coach before. Not on set, I don't like on set, but, but before, if I have to prepare the movie in French, I prefer to work with someone before because, you know, it's my second language. Uh, Anna Magnani and Claudio Cardinale, when they went to America, they were already famous through Italian movies. Today, it's not so easy anymore, you know, to have this kind of possibilities. So you have to speak English, you have to speak French, if you want to have the chance to go out of Italy. Uh, actually, I did an Italian movie called Malena, directed by Giuseppe Tornatore, and the film went all over the world, but it uh, was a really an exception. It was the critical success of Malena, in which Monica starred in the title role, that really catapulted her to fame, playing a bewitching siren in wartime Sicily. The movie was nominated for 14 awards, including a Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film. I love to act in Italian, but, um, but I like to work in different languages other than my mother tongue, because um, it's very, I, I actually, it gives me the more freedom, you know? I feel more free as an actor to, to play sometimes in French and English. Monica explored this freedom as part of Rebecca Miller's all-star cast in the American film, The Private Lives of Pippa Lee. In the film, there are uh, Robin Wright Ben, Julia Moore, Winona Ryder, Ken Reeves. So it was in, in a very big cast. And Rebecca Miller, I mean, she's really, really talented and she knows what she wants. And it was a really beautiful experience to be in this movie. And, and I like to work with women, you know? I don't have so many possibilities because most of the time I work with male directors. So, and I like the complicity mm -hmm. and the intimacy between women on set. I think that between women you get straight to the point easier sometimes. Monica's versatile talent led her again to Hollywood, where she would star alongside Nicolas Cage on Jerry Bruckheimer's summer blockbuster, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, I know that when I do European movies, uh, films have a small budget. When I work in American movies, there are big budget movie, but for me, as long as the director has a vision, and for me this is the most important thing, then if it's a big budget movie or a small budget movie, it really doesn't matter. Uh, which is important is, you know, what's happening when I'm in front of the camera. I had lost the one woman I have ever loved, trapped in a prison called the Grimhold by Horvath. The film is produced by Jerry Brookheimer and Walt Disney, and actually, I play Veronica, the long-lost love of uh, Balthazar, played by Nicolas Cage. And there is a moment in the film where Veronica is possessed by the evil sorceress Morgana. So I had the chance to play a double personality. That's why I said yes to this movie. And also because, uh, you know, it gives me the chance to make a film that my child can watch. Monica Bellucci is unfazed at the prospect of appearing in mature acting roles. Unlike many big Hollywood stars, she takes the aging process all within her stride. I think that in Europe, we don't have so much pressure about youth as in USA. 
We have all those actresses like uh, Catherine Deneuve or Natalie Bay, Isabelle Huppert, Cheryl Rampling. Uh, they, they have the chance, the possibilities to play beautiful, strong, deep, sensual characters. And uh, as a woman also, you know, I have a daughter. She's growing up and she's the future. I'm already the past. And I'm okay with that. I think it's the natural process of life. I feel much more strong and complete today than when I was 20. Repeatedly elected the most beautiful woman in the world by TV shows and magazines alike, Monica is clearly leaving a lasting impression on all who lay eyes on her. Director Terry Gilliam has said that Monica has the power to light up a screen and elevate a film into another realm. As the current face of Dior and with films lined up in both Europe and the States, it's certain this multitasking beauty will continue to grace our screens and magazines. I mean, my work is fantastic because I have the chance to bring my daughter with me all over I go. And, and because of that, she speaks different languages. She speaks Italian, French and English. And and you know, I'm I'm so happy about that. That even though I had, I'm working a lot, I, I feel that I'm there as a mother. And for me, this is the most important thing. I'm used to, to this kind of life, so I don't know what it means really to have a, a base. And I don't know how it's going to be my life next year. So we'll see. Thriving on spontaneity and risk, this film star has her feet firmly on the ground. Monica is a warm, sensuous and confident woman with an infectious passion for life. Whether mesmerizing us with the portrayal of a nun, a prostitute or a seductive sorceress, it's clear Monica casts a little magic whenever she appears.